Elizabeth and I, we are actually real life friends, friends off camera, not just on camera, on camera and off camera. We like to hang out and eat cheese boards together. You remember that? We eat cheese. <laughs> So anyways, I'm gonna see what's in the box. Oh, shucks, really? Am I really glowing? How do people as pale as me glow? Maybe some makeup. I would probably burn if I was in the sun. Some people look glowy when they have a suntan. I just look blistering and red. Oh my gosh. So we're on a gemstone channel. I am a gemologist. There's a gem in the box and we're talking about glowing, which means I think we're probably talking today about fluorescence. Am I right or am I right? You're right. I'm right. I am not quite sure what this is. This could be fluorite, Elizabeth. Welcome back. Oh. Thanks for coming back. What is this? This, is, this not... is calcite. That looks like an Andy's mint right there. Okay, so this so, is calcite. It is calcite. Calcite is fluorescent. Some of it. Some of it. So what are we chatting about today besides okay. fluorescence? Well, so we're gonna be doing fluorescence and a little bit of a very similar property called phosphorescence. So That's a big word right there. That's like the spelling bee. Can you use it in a sentence? What's the root word? So calcite's out of the trigonal crystal system. And we've talked about trigonal crystal systems before. Yeah. So with with fluorescence, there is about 5,000 or odd so minerals that are known to fluoresce. Okay. So that's about 15%. But it's it's a pretty rough number. So within that, not every mineral specimen in those species actually fluoresces. They have to have something called an activator. Okay. So those activators can be metal cation. So the cation is what sits at the front of, yes, it's what sits at the front of Cat. your chemical formula. So when you have your calcite chemical formula, so it's calcium carbonate, that calcium atom is actually your cation. So it's, it's like this big one. Yeah. So with fluorescence, a lot of those are actually activated in different minerals by the presence of different metals. So you can have tungsten, molybdenum. So then you can also have other things like, they're called rare earth elements, but they include europium, yttrium. Oh, I'm really bad with the rare earth That's element okay. names, but they're, they're, they're a little bit out hard, there. Long and hard to spell. So fluorescence is basically where you take photons. So you take energy and these this energy has a wavelength to it. So just like light is energy. We'll just think of fluorescence where you have this wave coming in and it imparts energy into that cation. Well, so as that cation actually takes in that energy, the little electrons that are orbiting the nucleus get excited and they actually jump from their base state up into a new shell on that atom. So they just get too hyper. They get excited and they basically enter a bounce house. <laughs> That's what, so, cool, what, you know what, would have been a great way to show that would be for you and I to have a bounce house. I would probably hurt myself. So in, in that instant that it gets enough energy and it rises up to that next level, the electron goes, I really shouldn't be here. Okay. So then it releases that energy, sinks back down to its base state. That energy was released in the form of another light photon just with less energy. So what happens is, is you have something like UV, which is ultraviolet, meaning it's a little bit shorter wavelength than the violet end of the spectrum. So like with your um, long wave UV and short wave UV, the long wave has a, we call it the principal wavelength, which is basically the most common wavelength that actually excites atoms to the correct amount to release fluorescence. Well, so the principal wavelength is 365 nanometers. In short wave, it is 254, I believe. Look I think I'm you. correct. So these are both really close to the violet end of the spectra. So the visible light spectrum that we can observe with our eyes goes all the way from violet to red. And red actually has the longest wavelength up around, the longest red wavelength we can observe with our eyes is 750 nanometers. Fun fact, violet and purple are different. Yes, they are. And then the shortest wavelengths that we can actually observe, I think are down at 300 and 
80. You have that that we can observe. And that's why sometimes like if you see somebody use a black light, mm -hmm. it kind of has a purple tint to it or bluish tint to it. It's because mixed in there is a little bit of visible light, but because it's all the way near the end of that visible spectrum, our eyes interpret it towards more the violet and the blue. Just remember fluorescence excitement and yeah. each mineral uh, or each gem will have a different type of excitement. Not every gem is going to have atoms that get excited. Not every gem fluoresces. One of the coolest stones that fluoresces is ruby. Oh, ruby, yeah. when it fluoresces, <laughs> um, literally looks like it's glowing. And that's kind of one of the value factors. You know, you want your rubies to fluoresce because it makes them look even more bright bright and alive. Um, so if any of you own rubies, put it on and go out in the sun and tell me what you think. Make sure it's clean though, because dust Dust does make it look okay, not quite as we pretty. We should open all of these together. Okay. Three, two. <gasps> hey! Okay, yeah, that is fluorite right there. <laughs> yep. Okay, what's that? This is a rock. That's ruby. Yep. How we um, keep track of these in the building. Opal. Yep. Okay, so all of these in some way, shape, or form will exhibit fluorescence. So we talked about fluorescence. Uh -huh. Tell me a quick definition of phosphorescence. So phosphorescence is where you have that same fluorescence, that activation with energy. But, so most fluorescence, as soon as that energy source is taken away. Which could be, a, you know, like a different light source. A light, or if you walk out of the sun or something. So the energy source is taken away and immediately within, I mean like. Seconds. Nanoseconds whatever's fluorescing stops. Like our eye does not perceive a difference. With phosphorescence, phosphorescence means that after that light source or that energy source is taken away, that stone continues to glow for a period of time. With the phosphorescence, it will be a split second, but you will actually see the glow linger. I think that's so wild. So, which it's is creepy. really, like, it's really cool. Not only can phosphorescence be caused by these elemental metal activators, so there can also be things like deformations in the crystal lattice, and you can also have things that are organic in nature cause fluorescence. So, so if you guys have any, if anybody's ever walked into a club and like they look at their shirt or something and there's a black light and it's like covered in these little spots and things like that, it's dust and hair. So sometimes different That's... things can actually fluoresce. Should we do this? Uh, All right. Yeah. Me, right. Where's the light? The light is here. Don't look in the light, Elizabeth. I'm not worried about me. <laughs> I'm not worried it's about me. It's accidentally blinding the camera people. So notice, warning, do not expose Kids. to skin or eyes. Don't try this at home. Shortwave UV can actually give you a sunburn. So yeah. Elizabeth and I either have the snap lights or we have a really creative production team. I'm gonna leave that up to you to decide. So in three seconds, okay. the lights are gonna be off. Three, three two, two, one. one. Okay. All right, Elizabeth. So no one look at the light. So, okay, guys. So, so just as a quick aside here, if you guys notice all those white little polka dots everywhere, is that dust? That would be dust. Okay, so this is the calcite right here, and you can yep. see it's um, fluorescing orange. Okay, so that's the ruby right there. Yeah. So this ruby is from, I believe, Norway. And this is why people love ruby, everyone. It's that fluorescence. It kind of gives the stone this extra pop. And that's probably one of the top five reasons I'd love to own a, a ruby in my collection. Yep. Okay, so we have. Okay, so this is. That looks like. And mold. you guys, you guys, jokingly hear me call it a rock. Well, it is technically a rock. That is several different minerals in there. So the black polka dots are zincite. The green is called willemite, and the pink reddish color is, I believe, calcite in here. This is from Sterling Hill which is mine in Franklin, New Jersey. Wow, and this stuff is really awesome. So I think it's either once a year or a couple times a year, you can actually go to the mine. It's, it's closed now for actual mining, but you can go to the mine and they put giant black lights out on these hillsides and inside of the mine, and you can walk into a big giant fluorescent display of all of this. That's super creepy <laughs> Which looking. is really cool. All right, right here is the fluorite. Yes. So which that, if you guys don't remember, that was kind of like a, a greenish hue. It's dark green, dark like green. forest green. Yeah, it was beautiful, and now it literally looks kind of like snow. It, it's or milky. Ice. It's beautiful. So it's a milky blue is what we would call it. Um, so this stuff is so strongly fluorescent. If I was to walk outside with it, it turns regular blue, not quite milky though. That's creepy. It's, it's this is it's creepy. not creepy. I think this is kind of soupy. So a lot of fluorite is actually 
fluorescent because of a mineral called europium, or an element called europium. Can you spell that? No. This was a really light green, yep. and that literally looks like neon. It looks like someone plugged it in. Yeah, it to me, I always call it toxic green. It does so, like, look you like think toxic it's green. Toxic. Well, you know what it's colored by, right? What? Uranium. Is this radioactive? No. Why is, how is it not radioactive if there's uranium So you it? have such small trace amounts of uranium that it's called a uranyl ion. So I have literally encountered very heavily included uranium minerals that were like uranium ore minerals. And in daylight, they look like they're glowing. All right, Elizabeth, this is an opal right here. Yes, yeah, so that's Why is a little it not doing opal. Anything? That is doing something. Is it? Yes, so this is, it is fluorescing white. Oh. I would not have picked that up. Yeah, so you it is fluorescent white. My favorite one right here is by far the ruby. So it's by far the ruby. Okay, so put it back and we're gonna try something. Oh, did you notice the glow on the Oh, purple? there it is, there it is, now yeah, I see so, it. Okay, so phosphorescence here, guys. I thought this was pretty cool. So I'm going to, Natalie, if you take it and you just click it back to middle. Right here? Yeah, so. Okay, guys, keep an eye out. Three, two, one. Notice how it fades. So that's that is wild. classic phosphorescence. So with this light coming back on, we're gonna see if I have any difference in the reaction versus shortwave. So really quick, remove hands. So with shortwave, shortwave basically means that it has a shorter wavelength. And that shorter wavelength is what can give you skin cancer essentially. So we don't want to uh, stare at it, keep our hands in it, all of that kind of good stuff. So. Ready? Three, two, one. And you gotta wait for it. <gasps> yeah. Whoa! That is, that, that is crazy? amazing. Man, that went from like green to like radioactive to looking. green. Wow. <laughs> wait, what did you call it again? Like danger green? It looks like toxic sludge. It's not. So, and if you'll notice too, the reaction, the uh, little guy that looks like a fan is called atomite. And notice the reactions totally, it's a little bit dull. Mm -hmm. And notice that the opal, which is over here, has no Nothing. reaction. Hey, um, well, I guess we could say this could be our closer look. Yeah, this is pretty cool. All right, everyone, so take ready? a close look at that color. And now the lights are going out. Take a close look at that glow. I think that's pretty cool, huh? You think that's pretty cool? I'm a giant nerd, so yeah, it's pretty darn I know, cool. That's why I have you on the channel. I love all your nerdiness. It's super fun. We uh, had a very successful episode. We did. Science experiment, cool gems, gemologist versus geologist, and nerding out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on the episodes that we have coming up in the future. Send Elizabeth a dog emoji, because she is a dog lover. You Five dogs. Yes. We'll maybe post pictures in the comments of Elizabeth's dogs. They're really, really, really cute. And we'll catch you later. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.